Hi, I'm Dala, and today I'm going to talk a bit about the battery emulator project and uh, tell you a bit about what's new and upcoming, because oh boy, this project is growing fast and it's getting big. But before we dive into that, let's look at what is working. So I tagged the version 1.00, this one has been in use for a bit over three months already, and this was the initial version that supported Leaf batteries with the Fronius Gen 24. But yeah, let's look at the new stuff. So first of all, I am very proud to introduce the support for new inverters. And we have now added compatibility uh, or like a basic compatibility for SunGrow and Solax hybrid inverters. So this means that uh, uh, as soon as somebody tests this out extensively, we will mark them as stable. And this is very big news because this opens up a uh, whole new markets for other areas that cannot source the Fronius uh, inverters. And how is this done? Well, the software can now emulate more brand batteries and I've made the architecture very modular. So in the future, you can very easily add new inverters uh, or inverter protocols to the code base. And they have their own like C files and header files. So this will be very easy to work on in parallel. But this is not all, no. I'm also adding supports for new batteries. And we're going hard and we're adding Tesla Model 3, Renault Zoe, Renault Kango batteries and Nissan ENV200 support. And all these batteries, uh, they're not considered stable yet. There's still some fine tuning ongoing, but as soon as someone tests this out and uh, just confirms that it's working or if something is not working, we can fix that. And when it works, we will mark them as stable. Again, this is done with the modular architecture. So if we look at what the code looks like now, instead of everything being in one single big file, each battery and communication protocol now have, has, have its own files. And this will make it very easy to cooperate on this code. And it's easy to only fix stuff that's broken or fine tune something specific to one type of battery. And also if you want to add more batteries, you just create a new file and yeah, add it to the project. So very cool. But that's not all. Uh, I've also added uh, cyclic redundancy checks for leaf batteries. And I'm gonna talk a bit about this, what this is. This is actually in use on my own, uh, own uh, leaf pack already, so I know that this works. And here's a bit of backstory. If uh, the can wires are too close to the high voltage lines, the big magnetic fields can corrupt can messages. And if this happens and the, those corrupted messages are read and interpreted by the inverter, uh, your graphs will look very strange. You will have strange dips. It will look like the inverter is stopping, starting, just wrecking havoc on the system. But uh, this was a good uh, like learning opportunity here. Instead of just fixing the problem in, in hardware, I added a code section that checks the uh, CRC bit on each CAN message and um, if this doesn't match the content then we just ignore that message so we don't get that uh, glitchy behavior. And I also added in that if we read enough of these glitched CAN messages it will turn the LED on the Lilygo, it will turn it yellow so that you can act on it and you know that hey I need to uh, shield the CAN wires better from the high voltage lines. And uh, here's a nice graph, but it should look like without any of those dips. But yeah, I also fixed my own high voltage wiring, but this was a very good setup that I could experiment with the CRC. So this makes the whole code even more stable. And another thing that's really amazing that's upcoming is uh, automatic contactor handling. This was something that a lot of you commented on, on the uh, video that I made that you didn't like that you had to manually turn on pre-charge, positive and negative contactors according to the sequence. So now the LilyGo board has the code and can handle this. You just need some additional electronics to make it happen. But this makes it much easier to install and use since you don't have to worry about that startup sequence. And there's no risk of accidentally destroying anything by flipping the wrong 
uh, switch at the wrong time. And also if some problem occurs, we can just in the software tell the contactors to go into shutdown state to make it even more safe. So we don't even have to uh, be there physically at the battery to turn it off in case it detects some errors. So this is an amazing upcoming feature that is yeah, going to be there finalized in the code soon. But yeah, uh, I think that's about it for this video. I've added a lot of things to the code and if you are interested in joining in on the development or supporting this project, uh, I highly recommend you to hop on to my Patreon. I have a link in the description. If you join the Patreon, you can join the Discord server and on this Discord server, you can chat with others that are adding batteries. Uh, you can help uh, the development. Uh, you can ask questions if you need help with your project. I mean, there's an amazing community ongoing there. So yeah, I think that's it for this video, uh, short update video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.